Hello everybody and welcome to Path to Platinum, the series where trophies are the new drip. <laughs> that's not true. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest installment in the Tales franchise, Tales of Arise. Honestly, I've been a big fan of the Tales series ever since Symphonia back on the GameCube, and I'm very happy to be featuring a Tales game on Path to Platinum. However, before we dive deeper into what's required, if you guys enjoy this video or it helps you out, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me, and I would really appreciate that, it would mean a lot. Now that that's over and done with, it's time we take a closer look at one of the most exciting sequels to grace our consoles, at least in my opinion. This is... Tales of Arise. Now before we delve into anything specific, it's important that we go over a few things that you will need to be mindful of when playing through this game. First things first, always view skits when they become available. There's a trophy called Ceaseless Chatterbox, which requires you to view 300 skits. Now this may sound like a lot, but it's actually very doable, as long as you always press R1 when prompted to view a skit. Ignoring them may cause you to miss them, and if you miss too many, then you won't be able to view all 300, which may force you into playing an entire second playthrough, which we really don't want. Also, resting at campfires whenever you have the opportunity can grant you access to skits as well. Not only that, but resting at campfires also allows you to deepen your bonds with the other party members. These also count as skits when viewed, plus there is a trophy to max out your bond with each and every party member, so working towards both these tasks simultaneously would be beneficial. Make sure that you're always mindful of skits when they appear, and campfires when you happen upon them, and you'll be fine. Now, it's worth noting that many of the trophies in this game are tied to one another. This means that simply playing the game and doing everything it has to offer will have you working towards several trophies all at once, so there's not too much to stress about here. For example, when you're doing side quests, this usually means that you'll get new titles towards the 400 titles trophy, or you'll get new recipes towards the recipe trophy, and so on and so forth. Case in point, this is especially true with side quests in particular. Now, there's a trophy to complete 70 different side quests in the game, but this is very straightforward and does not need too much of an explanation. Side quests will automatically appear on your map when they become available so missing them is extremely difficult to do. Whenever side quests are not available, it's because you need to advance the story further to make more appear. You will also have to beat the game and have a clear game save data in order to access the final side quests in the game, so be mindful of that as well. Lastly, what I will say about side quests is there is one in the game that I actually missed and had to look up in order to get the trophy for completing them all, and that's because this particular side quest was not very obvious to me at all. You'll notice that you pick up this key after defeating a particular boss in the game, however I won't spoil which one it is, but just be mindful when you get this key. Once you do have the secret key, simply quick jump over to Calaglia and head over to this door to trigger the potentially final side quest that you need. And once you do that, it's very short, very easy, and you'll have completed all side quests in the game by this point, uh, thus netting you the trophy. This was the last one I needed anyway, because like I said, it's not very obvious at all, and it doesn't tell you where to go. Not to mention the side quest itself doesn't trigger until you get close enough to the door, so it's very easy to miss this one. So in case you're in the same boat as me, uh, this is why I'm talking about it right now. But every other side quest in the game is very straightforward and will appear, like I said, on their own, so you shouldn't have missed any others. And that's all I'll say regarding side quests. Lastly, I will mention that unlike, well, every other Tales game to date, this Tales game does not require you to play multiple playthroughs. You can very manageably platinum this game by the end of your first playthrough, which is very nice. There's more than enough opportunities and experience to gain in order to reach level 100 for all of your party members. If anything in this game feels too difficult, then the solution is as simple as lowering the difficulty to easy mode. At that point, everything can be accomplished quite easily and no task is too daunting. Now that we got all that out of the way, uh, one of the easier trophies in the game that we can start working towards right away is going to be the Diligent 
Counter-Attacker, which requires you to perform 100 counter edges throughout the game. This is very easy to do. Simply dodge an enemy's attack just before it connects, and if timed correctly, then immediately press the attack button to perform a counter edge. Do this 100 times and the trophy is yours. If you're having difficulty with this one, then there are skills you can learn in the titles menu to make this a lot easier. And since we're on the subject of combat, next I'll talk about the 100 Hit Smackdown trophy, which requires you to perform a 100 hit combo in a battle. This is pretty hard to do earlier on in the game, but later on once you start running into much bigger and tougher enemies, and your characters are at a much higher level, then accomplishing this should be very simple, and it's just a matter of time until you achieve it rather easily. It's worth noting that this is much easier to do when playing as either Alfin or Dohalim, as they have a wide variety of multi-hitting attacks, which chain together very nicely, making this much easier. And the last easy trophy I'll talk about is going to be the Veteran Rancher, which requires you to collect 50 harvests at the ranch. Now, just before you arrive in Vicent, you'll run into this old guy collapsed in the middle of the road. Complete his easy side quest, and you'll gain access to the ranch. Once you have access, then it'll be as easy as just picking which types of harvest you want, selecting them, and then simply waiting. Once they're ready to be collected, you rinse and repeat. You can even do this at most shopkeepers you meet on your travels, so you can achieve this in no time and without having to return to the ranch. Do this 50 times and you will have your trophy. Alright, so with all those trophies out of the way, now we can focus on the not-so-straightforward trophies, and we'll start out with the Owls. There's a trophy to find and gather all 38 Owls in the game, so right now you'll be seeing footage of every Owl's location in order from when they become available and onward, to make things simple and easy to follow. Simply keep watching if you're worried about missing any Owls, or if you've already missed one, then feel free to use the timestamp navigation tool in the description to jump to any specific owl if need be. Alright, so now that we're just showing the locations of the owls from here on out, uh, I'm gonna have to fill the void with my uh, colorful commentary, as uh, we are all uh, painfully aware of. Uh, this is something that happens pretty regularly, pretty often during my Path to Platinum videos. There comes a time in every guide maker's life where he just he has to come up with some random bullshit to just you know entertain the viewer so this is me hi hello How, how's it going I hope I hope you guys are enjoying the guide so far I hope it's really helping you guys out see look at these owls they're so fucking cute they're so goddamn adorable they're like definitely the best looking mascot that has ever been in a Tales game out of the, like, uh, you know, because Tales games usually try to, like, throw this, like, super adorable creature at you and try to make you love them. It doesn't always work, but with the owls, fucking spot on. Like, they're, they're just so damn cute! Uh, also, this owl right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this one. You may notice I'm in a crazy outfit. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, how do, how do you, how's he wearing that? Uh, the reason why I'm in that crazy outfit is because... This is an outfit you get later in the game, and uh, as you can see, that was owl number 32. Uh, yeah, I missed that owl, like, way back at the beginning of the game, because this is, like, very early on in the game. And the reason why I missed that owl is because normally the owls aren't too hard to find. They're actually very easy to find uh, once Rinwell joins the party, because Rinwell has a pet owl of her own named Hoodle, and you probably already know this. But Hoodle is pretty great because he's like a he's like a fucking owl radar. He'll start going off when an owl's nearby. So usually it's not something that you ever have to stress about or worry about because Hoodle will always tell you. Uh, as you can see right there, now that we have him, uh, he's floating around, uh, you know, going crazy. He's like, "Whoa, I got the fucking!" And yeah, and, and he's talking about you know his his brethren, his feathered brethren. Uh, and, yeah, but back back in Calaglia, we didn't have Hoodles, so it, it was very easy to miss an owl. And I only missed that fucking one, which pissed me off, because I was on a roll. I was finding them all, except that one. But, yeah, I had to go back, like, way later in the game and find them. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that could happen. That's, that's definitely a thing. But, you know, as I was saying, you know, I just love the owls. They're fucking great. Owls are awesome in real life and in video games. Or, or an anime video game. Look at this one. 
Looks like a fucking badass. Got the shades on and everything. There we go. There we go. But, uh, yeah. There are, um... There are some owls I'm gonna need to talk about coming up. Uh, this one drove me nuts, because... Uh, Hoodle will actually start telling you where this one is as soon as you enter the area. And from where you enter that area, it's like... It's close to the owl, but the owl's, like, on the other side of the wall. And you have to, like, run all the way through the dungeon before you actually find him. Uh, so that was kind of driving me crazy, because I, I spent a lot of time looking for that one without actually realizing where he was. So that was fun. A lot, lot of wasted time there, but, uh... Hey, don't worry about that. It's all good. Also, these owls... You get some fucking awesome rewards for collecting them, man. Uh, I can't remember how many you have to get. I think it's maybe every five. Maybe it's like the fish. I don't know. Because with the fish, every time you get a, uh, five new fish, you get a new reward. It might be the same with the owls. I, I'm, I can't remember. Feel free to, uh... Educate me in the comments about that, but, uh, yeah, every time you revisit the, uh, secret owl sanctum, the owl king will give you a new reward for finding more owls, and, uh, you usually get, like, new color schemes for your outfits, and they're actually really fucking nice, like, some of the color schemes you get are, like, better than the default colors, and... I already think the party members are wearing such great outfits. Like, this is one right here uh, that you're seeing on screen for Alfin. Uh, the, the red and gold and brown, like, mmm, just looks so fucking, fucking beautiful. It looks amazing. And, you know, a bunch of the characters get better colors than their default colors, which is fucking awesome. This was another one I missed. Uh, as you can tell, I'm in the crazy outfit again, because this was an owl I found very late. He was hiding in the kitchen! He just wants some fucking snacks! I mean, he could've just went fishing, man. There's fishing ponds everywhere. Tons of fish to eat. Scoop up, snack on them. Yummy. But, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, I didn't search the entire, uh, palace in Vicent, because it just struck me as tedious. I mean, that place is huge. There's like a million rooms. And I didn't want to search them all. And I got punished for that, because there was a fucking owl hiding in one of them. Whoopee! But, uh, actually, the owl, there's an owl I need to talk about coming up. Don't worry, I'll talk about him. I'll remember. It's important. I actually thought there was a missable owl in this game, but turns out there wasn't. And, uh, like I said, don't worry, we're gonna talk about it. But, yeah! So, yeah, those were the only two owls I missed. The one in Calaglia and the one in the kitchen. Uh, every other owl in the game I found no problem. But, uh, yeah, so one I found because I didn't, or one I missed, rather, because I didn't have Hoodle, and the other one I missed because I was just lazy. Who wants to search every room in the fucking palace? Certainly not me. Hell no. Hell no. Absolutely not. This one took me a while to figure out where he was, too. He was in a tricky spot. He was in a tricky spot, he was. He. That's, that's what my commentary comes to. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying, man? Look at these owls, man. They're just... Uh, can I just say... I think that one's wearing the angel wings. Yeah, he is. The angel wings were so disappointing. Anyways, I gotta talk about this one. This owl right here. He's in the, um... He's in the fucking ship. When you're chasing Almadria. And this ship... Once you finish this dungeon, this ship becomes... Uh... You, you can't return here. This is the only time you can come here and find that owl. But, in case you miss that owl, he will show up right here on the shores of Thistleum. And there he is right there. So he's not missable. Just so you know. If you didn't get him on the ship, you can get him afterwards if you return here to the beach. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty nice. Because I thought that owl was like permanently missable and that you'd have to start a new file. Thank God for that. That would have been awful. Like, n having to replay an entire playthrough of a JRPG just to get one fucking collectible to platinum a game? That sucks. JRPGs are usually, like, a trillion hours long. And, uh, thank God with Arise, like, I just, oh my god, Arise is just such a good game. But, uh, even for Trophy Hunters, it's a great game. Like, they, they just, it's so convenient. You only have to play the one playthrough, and I can't get enough of that. That's so fucking awesome. 
Repeated back-to-back -back playthroughs of a JRPG is fucking awful. And I'm going through that right now with uh, Persona 4 um, Gold. In order to platinum that game on the Vita. And yeah, I know. Who the fuck's still playing Vita? Vita's old as shit. But I am. Because I wanted to play Persona 4. Alright? And I, I fucking I did. It's a great game. But you have to play two fully completed playthroughs back to back in order to platinum. And it's brutal. Like, the first time around was, like, long enough. And it was enjoyable because I hadn't seen any of it yet. But... Having to do it all a second time immediately after? It sucks. I hate it. Uh, as a trophy hunter. But, yeah. So, anyways. Probably keep talking more about the game. Uh, I was talking a little bit about how, uh... The attachments are extremely disappointing in this game. I found the attachments in the previous titles, like, for example, Vesperia, has probably the best attachments in any Tales game. Like, Vesperia had so many cool attachments, and ones that you willingly wanted to wear. Uh, oh, so here we go. I need to talk about this. So once you gather the first, I believe, 30 owls, you will have to go back to the Owl Sanctum, and then you'll get this scene. And it says, special owls seem to have appeared uh, everywhere on Dana. Um, and now I'm showing the locations of the final eight owls that have now spawned. Now, these owls, you need Dohalim, uh, Dohalim's ability to get this one. But, um, yeah, these owls weren't here previously. They, if, if you had to come to these areas before viewing that scene, these owls wouldn't be here. So you do have to find the initial 30 before you could find the final 8. And then once the Owl King tells you that these owls exist, you can go and fucking get them. Or is it the final 8? I can't fucking... How many was that? Or, or no, maybe it's like the final 6? I don't fucking remember what the number is, but these are the final owls. Look at that one. He's so fucking chunky. And it's cute. It's so cute, it's pissing me the fuck off! Stop being so cute, damn it. But anyways, yeah, uh, the attachments... Like, 90% of them look fucking awful in this game. And, you know, what's up with that? Uh, particularly, I brought it up on the angel wings because I couldn't- I can't stress how disappointing the angel wings look in this game compared to how they look in Vesperia. In Vesperia, they were fucking beautiful. And I would always put them on Estelle because, like, she just rocked them so well. But in this game, they look fucking atrocious. I don't know what happened. That one's cute as fuck, too. Look at him. He's got glasses. God damn. These owls. They're killing me. They are killing me. This one's funny. Because he's trying to be Volron. I believe the final eight, or bleh, whatever the number is, the final six owls, they're all trying to pretend to be the bosses, I think. Because that one's trying to be Volron. You can tell by his, like, eyes. I think. that That's the impression I got from them anyway. I don't know if it's true. Alright, so with this, uh, right now I'm showing you, you have to return to Thistleum here in order to trigger this cutscene. You have to go back to the beach where Alfin first woke up after losing uh, Shion. And then you'll get this scene about a uh, an SOS bottle. Then you gotta go to the ship here, talk to this guy, and he's gonna bring you to a new location, the uninhabited island. So this is how you get here. It is side quest dependent. You need to trigger that quest in order to get here or to be able to get here. And then once you're here, this is it. Uh, here's the map. And then once you get to this spot, you will have to fight a boss here. But I already killed him. Uh, this is the final owl on the uninhabited island. So that's how you do that. Remember that that's how you need to do that because you will need to be returning to the uninhabited island for fishing. But anyways, that's all the owls. Now, with all the owls out of the way, we can talk about the recipes that you might have missed. You'll have most recipes by now obtained through side quests and story progression, but there are some recipes that must be earned by opening treasure chests. So right now, you're seeing footage of all the recipes obtained through chests. In case you might not have found any of these, you can see where they are and scoop them up now. You will need 30 of the recipes for the globe-trotting foodie trophy, however, there are 38 recipes in total available to you so you don't actually have to grab them all for the trophy if you still don't have them all even after grabbing all the ones i'm showing you then just continue completing side quests until you have all the remaining recipes and you'll earn yourself a trophy but obviously you know that's still a ways off now here we go with even more colorful commentary it just it keeps going it just it, it don't stop but uh 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, as I said, these are recipes that you can find in the overworld, like, through looting chests, or there's a couple where you need to, uh, heal some random person on the map, uh, via map action, because, you know, that's a thing in this game that you can do, but, um, yeah, so, these are, these are all the recipes that I could find that you don't get through story progression or via side quest. Uh, some of them, there's a couple of them where you need to do a side quest in order to get to them, like, for example, the Uninhabited Island. Uh, I'll mention that again when we get there. But, um, yeah, these, like, these ones are just ones that you could pick up and scoop up anytime if you have missed them. So these ones are nice, because, like, you know, let's say you're at the end of the game and you're just, like, a few recipes shy of getting the trophy, then hopefully this will help you out. Uh, as you're about to see in the footage here, there's actually some some of these recipes I didn't end up finding at all until I went to go get this footage. Like, see, look right there. I got the horse sashimi, uh, which sounds fucking disgusting, by the way. But I got it um, super fucking late. Like, this footage you're watching right now, I already have the platinum. Because uh, I'm walking around... Retracing my steps, showing where the recipes I already got were, but, um, you know, in case you didn't, here you go. You're fucking welcome. But yeah! Uh, so yeah. Recipes? Recipes. But yeah, just, uh, just remember that, you know, side quests are the key to most things in this game. Like, if, if you're ever wondering why you don't have a recipe, or why you don't have a fucking particular item, or artifact, or blah 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 blah, the answer is probably because you need to do a side quest. That's usually the case. And you know, it's like I said, like, side quests literally are always visible in the fucking, on the map. If there's ever one available to you, you could go and do it at any time. Here's what I was talking about, uh, via map action. This is when you get to Lenigus. Uh, so you can heal these guys and scoop up some recipes! Yay, yay! But, um, yeah! Uh, I'm, I'm running out of words here. I, you know, I can only do so well on the commentary for so long until, until it starts to get to me. But we're, we're almost done. But here we go, here's the uninhabited island. Uh, refer to the final owl a little earlier in the video if you want to learn how to get to the uninhabited island. Because like I said, you can only get here via side quest. So, just keep that in mind. Now, for the, what I'm about to show you here, uh, this is post-game only! You have to have beaten the game in order to even have this happen. What you're going to want to do is come back to Vincent and go into the inn. And you're going to see this chick wearing red she's gonna be standing right in front of the uh the innkeeper there she's not here for me because i already did the quest but you could talk to her start a side quest and you'll get like three four different recipes out of that so just remember to do that now much like the recipes trophy there is also a trophy for obtaining 20 artifacts found throughout the game called curious hobbyist now there are 23 artifacts in total that can be earned and 19 of them are earned via story progression, finding owls, or completing side quests. Meaning you'll have almost all of them by now, however, there are two that you can find in chests, and two more that can be earned by completing the level 40 and 60 Dohalim trials in the arena. Alright, so as you can see, I've already showed where the Blade of Sealing was over at Adon Lake. Uh, now I'm going to be showing where the drums of the master are, as you can see, and, uh, the quickest way here was to take the exact path I showed you by quick jumping to the left two marshlands. But yeah, you're going to jump, make that huge drop, climb up this massive ladder, and just follow the path. There's going to be some enemy mobs along the way, but once you take them out, uh, you will eventually reach this chest. You'll know it's the right one when it, when you see the red and gold. And that's going to be your next artifact. So those are the two that are in a chest. And then the next two can be earned from the training grounds in Vicent uh, as Dohalim's solo trials rewards. Once you've done all that, then you will have all artifacts available to you throughout the game. And you will definitely have your trophy by now if you didn't already. And lastly, the only important thing left to talk about is fishing. 
So before I explain everything there is to know about fishing, first I'm going to show you the location of every fishing hole throughout the game, in case you miss one or need to refer to them to scoop up any fish that you might have missed. And hey, look at that, we're already back to my delightfully colorful commentary. What a beautiful fishing spot this is, what the fuck? Anyways, here we go. So, yeah, like, as I was saying, these are all the fishing spots. We're showing them all in order from when you find them. And, you know, showing where they are on the on the map. Yes, I know. Fucking, I'm insanely, insanely fucking helpful. I know. You're welcome. You're welcome. You don't have to fucking tell me. I'm aware. I, I know I do a great job. I, I, I go the extra mile for you guys. And, you know... You're going to be spending a lot of time on these fishing spots, by the way. Fishing takes a while, but... It, well, I was going to say it's fun, but I mean... Kinda. It's not the most fun minigame I've ever done, but... It's it's not the most boring minigame I've ever done, either. It's alright. It's okay. Uh, also, some fishing spots have the same fish. Like, you could go to one fishing spot catch like three out of five fish or whatever and then go to another one and some of the fish you caught at the previous one or at this one as well so that that could happen which makes it a little harder to uh you know process of elimination that shit figure out which fish you caught and where they are and where the ones you haven't caught are it, it's a process but you know what has to be done if you want that fucking platinum trophy it has to be done so here the fog whirl uh limestone caverns you can only get here via side quest, and you have to kill one of the biggest, baddest bosses in order to access this pond, so just be aware of that. And with the uninhabited island here, refer back to the owl that's on this place in order to learn how to get here. Alright, now that we know where all the fishing holes are in the game, it's time to learn how fishing works. Shortly after Kisara and Dohalim join the party, you will happen upon a fishing hole, and the game will vaguely describe to the player how to fish. Honestly, I found the game to be very unhelpful in this moment, and helping me to try to understand how it worked, and I got pretty frustrated trying to teach myself how it worked, so in case you guys ran into the same issue, I will begin to explain it now. Alright, so the way fishing works is basically like this. Um, when you Once you've cast your line and you've caught a fish, you're going to want to wait until the game prompts you to do something. So, And there's only two prompts that you can get. It'll either be to press in a certain direction or to press a specific button. Now, whenever you see those little arrows pop up, that's when you want to hold that direction that the arrows are pointing to. And you do it for as long as the arrows are there and no longer. And then whenever it prompts you to hit a button, obviously just press that button, that's pretty straightforward. But I found the uh, pressing the direction to be somewhat confusing when I first did it, so that's how you do it. If you're ever pressing a direction when the arrows aren't pointing, then you're just going to be making things worse for yourself and the fish will end up getting away. So make sure you don't do that. So now that we know how to fish, it's time I explained how exactly to get all of the fish in the game, as it is required for a trophy. So when you first enter a fishing hole, you will see a list of fish in the bottom of the right-hand corner of the screen. That is a list of all the fish available in that specific pond. Each pond has its own unique fish, so you will be spending some time at each and every pond to gather all the fish available to you. The list is ordered from top to bottom, the fish on top being easier to catch slash spawn, while the lower half lists the rarer and much harder to catch fish. Now, even the hardest fish do have a chance to spawn at any time during your cast. However, it is much easier and much more consistent to use the fish's corresponding lure. You see, there are different lures you can acquire throughout the game. Some can be earned by catching new types of fish and then talking to the master fisherman. Every five new fish you catch, he will reward you with either an upgraded rod or a new lure for new fish. Some lures have to be acquired from treasure chests, however, so I'll be showing the locations of those chests right now. And would you look at that, we're already back to my colorful commentary yet again! So here we are, we're uh, showing... Well, who's we? I'm showing the, the locations of all the different lures in the game. Uh, and I imagine this is going to be quite helpful to you. Because uh, fishing uh, can be kind of a bitch when you're trying to get every single fish in the game. But uh, 
Yeah, so there's some that you can only get in chests, as you can fucking see. And also, uh, you're gonna notice uh, some of these chests uh, I already opened, and I actually, uh, you know, wasn't thinking in the moment, and I didn't record it. Uh, for some of them. Some of them I was ready, and others I wasn't. Why did I get some and not others? Who fucking knows? I'm, I'm a goddamn enigma. You know, sometimes I'm on point, I'm thinking about this shit ahead of time. Sometimes I'm not. And it just, that's just who I am, you know? It's, you know, if anything, these guides really, uh, you know, equate to what I'm like in real life, you know? Just half ass and shit. Sometimes I'm on point, sometimes I'm not. But yeah, so, I'm revisiting these locations. As you can see, I'm already level 100 in the footage. Haha! <laughs> but you probably aren't yet, but you will be. Because you have to be the Platinum, bitch. Uh, and just a reminder, in order to get to Fog World Limestone Caverns, uh, you can only get here via side quest. So if you're wondering where the fuck this place is, you haven't done the side quest yet. So make sure you fucking do that, stupid. Uh, I mean, you're a wonderful viewer. And I appreciate all your support. Uh, so these lures that I'm showing now, you'll notice them in the Sislodon Inn. Uh, I believe every inn in every major city in the game has a unique lure for sale. So just uh, go up to the shopkeep at every inn and see, you'll notice right there the disarming lure. I believe they're all 500 gold each. Gold, sorry. Because this game likes to be special and have a unique name for its money. Uh, unlike Kingdom Hearts, which just calls it money. But, it's, but it spells it M-U-N-N-Y. In case you never played Kingdom Hearts. Jeez, I'm, that's two different JRPGs I've referenced in this video. Crazy! But that one was in Vicente's Inn. Now we're going to Niez's Inn. And then the next one is uh, Pelagian. And then... Yeah! But just don't forget to scoop these up. These aren't missable, so if you did miss them, you can obviously uh, quick jump to the end at any time and come scoop them up if you didn't have them already. That was actually the case for me, if you couldn't already fucking tell from me wearing uh, the goddamn outfit I'm wearing, which you don't get until the super fucking late game. But yeah! So here we are, as I said, Pelagian Inn. This is the last one that's sold in an inn. And now, for the next uh, th uh, the next few things I'm going to show for fishing, they are unlocked via Kasara's Training Ground uh, solo events. So you have to play as Kasara solo. As you can see, you get the Celestial Whale from the Novice. From the Advanced, you get the Mew Sinker. And then from Ultimate, you don't get a lure, but you do get a new rod, and you might want that to make catching the boss fish a lot easier. So I would recommend that. Once you have all the different lures, you should have access to catching new fish that you haven't caught yet. And this should always be the case with each new lure. Simply revisit each of the ponds and catch the new fish available to you, and keep returning to the fishermen for more rewards. Once you've repeated this process enough times, you will eventually have access to every single fish in the game, and thus earning you the Godly Angler Trophy. As for any other trophies I have not yet discussed, they should be incredibly straightforward at this point. The 20 Gigant locations show up on the map via their corresponding side quests, making them very easy to find, so that shouldn't be an issue. Dealing 10,000 damage or more in a single hit is very easy to do, but if for whatever reason you haven't gotten it yet, then by the time you reach level 100, just switch the game to easy mode and then go hit one of the starting enemies at the beginning of the game, and that should net you the trophy. Crafting 100 weapons is easy once you have access to every area in the game, via side quests, so if you just keep doing side quests, that shouldn't be an issue either. As for the titles, they literally tell you how to unlock them in the menu, so it's self-explanatory. And then there's clearing the ultimate challenge in the arena, which should also be very doable by the time you reach level 100. Anything else I haven't mentioned or talked about should be incredibly obvious and easy to manage, so hopefully by this point you've accomplished everything and earned your platinum trophy. And with that, that is going to be it for this guide. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if it helped you guys out, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, hit that notification bell to support me. And I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you guys want more Platinum Trophies, then don't forget to refer to the Path to Platinum playlist over on my channel's homepage for more guides on more games. Links in the description. And just a little tidbit throwing that out there, if you guys want to see a video on my thoughts on this game, uh, the overall trophy hunting experience on it, 
as well as earning the Platinum, uh, basically my trophy list review of this game, then uh, go check my video on that uh, over on my channel. And lastly, come hang out in the live streams that I do here on my channel every now and then. It's a fun time if you guys feel like hanging out and shooting the shit with fellow trophy hunters. Anyways, with that, that's going to be it for me. Have a good one, everybody, and I will definitely see you in the next one.